Often I find myself um, trying to make sense of the world that I'm living in at the moment. I'm trying to understand the inequality of it. And the main way this happens is for, for me through images. And I'm, I've always um, somehow been um, thinking about how images order our world, how they uh, come to have an effect on our lives. So how I look at you or how you look at me. Um, and uh, so I think I've always been interested in how power is organized in an image. And I think um, that means that I'm often looking at old uh, photographs, I'm looking at archive, I'm looking on the internet, media images. Um, and for me, there's this um, strong relationship between uh, images that I see being circulated today um, and ones that were produced in the 19th century. And this relationship is often this kind of historical and the contemporary that I'm, I'm making connections to and, and, um, and I'm trying to think about. And I guess it's, all, it's because of the effect and, um, and power they have over my life today. So that's one thing. Um, the other, I mean, what I talked about uh, in the press conference was um, this idea that when I first started making art, it had to do with um, like sheer survival. It was um, an, a place, the only place drawing and painting um, allowed me a space for self-expression that I did not have in any other way um, to talk about the world I was um, confronted with. And so I, I think that um, what began as um, a process of survival has changed. Um, and I now, I mean, art is uh, something broader than just, um, uh, than this for me, but uh, this, notion of embodied self-expression, of being able to talk about um, the historical record, but from my point of view, is really important to me. And, um, and, and, and so this is why I uh, work with uh, sometimes uh, images that are 100 years old, um, as well as documents from wars that are being conducted by the US um, uh, today. And I'm trying to make connections between the two. And it's just this, uh, over the years, what has come to the foreground in, in a lot of my work is that um, there's always this, um, it, it has turned into a strategy of using beauty and humor, I think, um, to, uh, balance, uh, but also um, uh, work as a counterpoint to the tremendous orders of violence that kind of organize our world. And, um, and for me, then beauty becomes a, um, a place of resistance, um, an act of resistance. So creating a document of beauty in and of itself without any other connection to um, historical material is for me um, becomes a place, um, a type of resistance um, towards the brutality of um, a lot of um, the structures of the world we're living in. So I made a new, um, eight new portraits uh, from a series called Did You Kiss the Dead Body? This series, the title actually comes from a poem um, written by Harold Pinter, who's a British playwright. Um, and it's about the, somehow, um, the bureaucratization of death. And this work is based on um, autopsy reports that were produced by the US military in Iraq and Afghanistan um, and were released to the public um, in the early 2000s. I've been working with them. Um, I've been aware of them since 2004, and um, they've been in the public domain, and I've worked with them as an, um, in this project since 2009, I think. To the, that was the start. Uh, I have a set of drawings in the uh, exhibition um, that I have made in the past, as well as eight new portraits. 
And these works um, are a new direction in the project, which tries to think about two sets of um, violence and historical violence. Uh, one is visual and comes from the 1930s um, and was produced um, a, a, an anthropometric expedition. Uh, so an anthropologist took a, um, a number of people to Iraq in the 1930s and measured, um, physically measured uh, tribal people, photographed them and created a number of books. His name was Henry Field. And I came across his research when I was um, in, uh, at Harvard uh, doing uh, archival research for uh, other work. And once I came across this work in Iraq, these photographs, I thought somehow, uh, I thought back to these autopsy reports I'd been working with, and I thought somehow there was a relationship, but I didn't know what this relationship was. And, um, and then fast forward, um, to when I was invited to produce this show, I then thought, okay, now I would like to actually reinvestigate this project with this, these autopsy reports, um, which I, in the past, had marbled, um, and this marbling for me is about, um, I didn't talk about it today earlier, but this marbling has to do with um, somehow creating um, this visual motif of the body's interior. Uh, it looks like something you'd see um, through a microscope. It looks like the interior of the body. And on top of that, I, ha um, I uh, have uh, made a set of portraits um, of uh, people that were photographed actually by Henry Field. So this is a project called Enter My Burning House. Um, I made it in 2021. Um, they are a series of seven portraits. Um, I think of this as a memorial project. Uh, these are seven um, people that were killed by a white supremacist gunman in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. He entered a Gurdwara um, with the idea that he was going to kill Muslims. And he killed um, six, immediately killed six uh, Sikh worshippers. Uh, and uh, paralyzed uh, a seventh, uh, Baba Punjab Singh, and then he died seven years later in a nursing home. And so I decided to make these portraits on the pages of um, a book called The Passing of the Great Race that was written by Madison Grant. He was an American author um, uh, from, he wrote the book in 1914, it was a book that was um, very important in the, um, in the anti-immigration movement in the US, uh, but it also outlined um, uh, ideas uh, around eugenics. He was really influential to the National Socialists and Adolf Hitler. Um, uh, Hitler wrote him a letter telling him he was, uh, his, uh, that the book was his Bible, um, and this book, um, and Madison Grant as a figure, it, I've used the first edition pages of his book um, as the sort of substrate of these paintings. And on the one hand, I was in a somewhat of a dilemma. I neither wanted to privilege the voice of Madison Grant um, because of, um, uh, while making their portraits, but on the other hand, I felt it was important to layer their portraits on top of um, this book because I wanted to point to the historical legacy of um, white supremacist ideas that got created um, uh, over 100 years ago and led to, uh, for me directly, uh, the, the killings um, of these individuals. And so um, in, much of, in many of these portraits, the text is, is less legible um, that in other works in the show, um, because of this, um, not wanting to privilege a voice, yet wanting to acknowledge the, the legacy of, of these ideas.